I'm John Warren with Gilson Engineering. We're in the Gilson Engineering Flow Lab to talk to you today about the MSA GX2 Automatic Calibration Station. The GX2 gives you a way to automate the calibration of your confined space monitors as well as the bump tests and gives you a way to automatically document those bump tests and calibrations without resorting to pen and paper. Let's take a look at the hardware. The GX2 hardware consists of uh, instrument cradles, each one's designed for the specific gas monitor that you're working with. This happens to be the unit for the uh, Altair 4XR. We have a cradle here for the Altair 5X. We have a smart cylinder holder that enables you to monitor how much gas you have available. And then we have the calibration gas bottle as well. You'll notice on the calibration cylinder, there's a black RFID tag. This tag consists of all the information of the particular consistence of the gas cylinder, as well as the lot number, part number, and expiration date on the cylinder. Once the uh, station's been assembled, we simply take the gas bottle, place it into the smart cylinder holder, and just thread it in. You'll notice that uh, LED here went from red to green. That indicates that I have enough gas to do a calibration or a bump test, and also that the gas is in spec and it's not expired. So let's take a look at the configuring your station and what you need to do to set this guy up. So let's look at the configuration of the station. You can have up to 10 smart cradles in the one station and up to four smart cylinder holders in one configuration station. The uh, couple parameters that you just need to put in to get the station up and running is put in through the touchpad here on the front. I'm already set up to go in as the administrator. I'm just going to go to the GX2 configuration. And this is a one-time setup. This is when you initially uh, start up the unit. We're going to start with the basics, time and date. We're just going to enter the time and date accordingly. This will be stored on the unit. Even if you lose power, it will be able to maintain the date and timestamp. And this is used for recording when that particular monitor uh, was calibrated or bump test. So we're set for the 10th. We're set for 8.38 or 8.36 a.m., my local time. And then I can save that by hitting the uh, save button up top. Save changes, yes. Let's go to the GX2 setup. This is some basic housekeeping. We just want to make sure that the USB drive is enabled to uh, record information when we download it. And this gives you the ability to erase that memory once that information has been downloaded from the internal memory of the unit. Let's go back. Let's go to test setup. This is how the instrument is going to perform. And whether you want it to do a calibration, a bump test, uh, or a bump test and then calibration on failure. So all we're going to do is set that up for how you want to operate that station. Right now my station's in calibration only mode, but I can change that to cal to check uh, or check on failure. There's a couple other units in here that we really don't use. Uh, we can do bump testing only if you just want to use it a bump test station. We can go calibration only. I'm going to leave that in calibration mode only so I can demonstrate to you the unit actually functioning. I also have the capability to go in here in interval and it will actually uh, be able to monitor, in this case at 30 day interval, that if the instrument has not been calibrated within the last 30 days, it will automatically calibrate that unit. Uh, and the same thing with the bump. The bump basically interval is we're going to bump that every day because we want to test that monitor, make sure it's functioning every time we take it out. Once I have that established, I'm going to go back out. And at this point, we're pretty much ready to roll and uh, put an instrument in and calibrate. So I'm going to go back to the home screen. Uh, the other thing that we'll point out on the run screen here is you have uh, basically your fuel tank gauge table tells you exactly how much gas that you have available in the cylinder. Right now I have 520 PSI. It also tells me my gas constituents, my part number for my gas cylinder, lot number, and when that gas expires. So in this case I've got good gas, I've got plenty of gas, uh, so we're ready, to, uh, we're ready to calibrate our instrument. 
So we have our 4XR monitor ready for calibration. I've turned the instrument on, let it go through its boot up sequence, and we're ready to put it in the GX2 for automatic calibration. So it's a unique cradle for the 4XR, and the instrument will only fit in one way. So we want to position the unit inside, and we want to hear a snap. At this point, I can go get a cup of coffee. The instrument will automatically calibrate itself. So it will start with a zero sequence and zero the instrument out, and it gives you the gas readings as it does that. So in this case, we have zero combustible, zero H2S, 20.8%, which is normal atmospheric oxygen, and zero parts per million CO. Okay, we've done a successful zero, and now we're into the span. So the unit is drawing gas from our quad gas bottle and introducing it to the instrument. Ideally, it will have 58% per, uh, LEL for the combustible, 20 parts per million H2S, about 15 and a half for the O2, and then uh, 60 parts per million uh, for our CO. The instrument will automatically be adjusted to those readings by the GX2, and then it will either pass or fail, and we'll show you here shortly what that looks like. There we go. We have a successful calibration with a time and date stamp with that information automatically recorded on an SD card on the side of the unit here. So we have a fast calibration. We're good to go. At this point, we can remove the instrument. And one thing to take note of is the big check mark that's on top of the readings here on the 4XR. That gives us indication that the unit's been successfully bumped and or calibrated in the last 24 hours. So when you see the device that has the check mark on it, that means that device is ready for operation. It's been either bumped or checked within, or calibrated in the last 24 hours. We're good to go. So we're ready to do our confined space entry. Okay, we have our Altair 5X monitor. We're gonna do a calibration with the GX2. I've let the unit uh, turn on and power up, go through its boot up sequence. We're ready to put it in its unique cradle. So we're gonna just turn the instrument around Place the bottom in first, slide the unit in and up until it, it reaches the nipple here to uh, get the gas, and we'll go get our cup of coffee now. Everything else is automatic from here. So we're going to do a zero initially on the unit. Again, we'll have three zeros, and then 20.8% O2 for atmospheric oxygen, and the rest is up to the station here. So we have a successful zero. Now we're going to span the instrument, pulling gas off our quad gas bottle. And again, the instrument's past calibration with a big green label here, also time and date stamp, and recorded that calibration onto the, uh, onto the SD card of the uh, main cradle. So at this point, we can just remove the instrument. We're going to pull down, out, take the instrument out. You'll notice a check mark in the upper right corner indicating that the unit's been successfully calibrated here in the last 24 hours, and it's good for operation, and you're ready for your confined space entry. Now that we've calibrated our monitors, let's see how we can extract that data from the station for remote analysis. So from my Main run screen here, I simply hit GX2 configuration, export data, and it will automatically throw it on a thumb drive that I have installed here on the side of the unit. So my download's complete. I can remove my memory stick, and then I can take this back to my laptop for further analysis. Thank you for joining us today. For any additional information, or if you have any questions, please check out our website, www.gilsoneng.com, and also you can contact any one of our offices at the toll-free number listed on the screen. Thanks again.